ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶದಯಾಪಾತ್ರಂ ಧೀಭಕ್ತಿಯಾದಿ ಗುಣಾರ್ಣವಂ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣಂ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯ ಜಾತರ ಮುನಿಂ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮಾಂ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಅಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ದೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯಾ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶಾತ್ರಿಭಕ್ತಿಯಾದಿ ಗುಣಾರ್ಣವಂ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣಂ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯ ಜಾತರ ಮುನಿ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮಾಂ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರಾಂ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಮಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಯ ಮೇ ಮೇ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯತೈಕಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯಾ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಅಪಗತಮದಮಾನೈರಂತಿ ಮೋಪಾಯ ನಿಷ್ಠೈ ಅಧಿಗತ ಪರಮಾರ್ಥೈರರ್ಥ ಕಾಮಾನಪೇಕ್ಷೈ ನಿಖಿಲಜನ ಸುಹೃದ್ಭಿರ್ನೃದ್ಯತ ಕ್ರೋಧ ಲೋಭೈ ಪರವರ ಮುನಿಭೃತ್ಯೈರಸ್ತು ಮೇ ನಿತ್ಯ ಯೋಗ ಯಾವೃತ್ತಿ ಮನಸಿ ಮನಸ ಜಾಯತ ಸಂಸ್ಮೃತಿಸ್ತೆ ಯೋ ಯೋ ಜಲ್ಪಸ್ತೋ ವಿಭೋ ನಾಮ ಸಂಕೀರ್ತನಂತೆ ಯಾಚೇಷ್ಟಾವಪುಷಿ ಭಗವನ್ ಸಾ ಭವೇದ್ವಂದನಂತೆ ಸರ್ವೂಯಾದ್ವರವರ ಮುನೇ ಸಮ್ಯಗಾರಾಧನಂತೆ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕವರ್ಡ್ what is known as the avatarika in sanskrit as well as in tamil language or rather manipravala language <coughs> and this avatarika covers the introduction to mumukshupadi as it was being given in those days <coughs> in the sense generally when we talk about something it is assumed that people know certain things suppose today i say <clears throat> i tell you people or any person for that matter uh, who has some knowledge of the contemporary systems that are prevailing in the world today suppose i say go online <clears throat> check this site you will get some information so i say yes and i am sure all the people who are in this class they will say yes i will go online and i'll say check out this site and download it this information or some website has something some uh, uh, archive uh, material is available online or something like that and people understand it and they say yes and when we read the introduction of pandavana mamuni today the people may feel strange or they may feel uh, what uh, what is this that he is talking about suppose i tell a person who does not know anything about internet who is in a remote village like melkote go online so they will not understand the word online or if i say internet they will not understand what internet is or uh, any what a website means or in a way <laughs> all these all these words are uh, alien to a person who may even be well versed in english for, for example uh, just to quote an example so <clears throat> somebody was telling these people are talking about windows when are they going to talk about doors when they are when are they going to talk about uh, walls etc because they don't understand what windows is all about because they don't know what computer sar or what operating systems are or things like that and uh, 
when i say uh, there was also another joke it said these people are always talking about ms word why not ms sentence why not ms paragraph or something else so they feel they may feel uh, out of place when they listen not they may not make any sense it may not make any sense to them regarding what is being spoken about similarly today we may not be able to immediately relate to what he is being talking about because all the sampradaya granthas in shri vaishnavism they say they say the shf patiya etc etc but we have to actually time travel in a way and go back to the situation that prevailed in those days so they were all brought up in a particular atmosphere and they could immediately relate to this type of an introduction which i will just read out because as far as the granthas or works of our purvacharyas are concerned it is very important that <clears throat> they are also listened to as far as their sound value is concerned as i i mentioned when i actually uh, actually here the lighting is very poor i don't have any other uh, option so we had to bear with it <clears throat> so um, it is very important because these are called the shri suktis the words of our purvacharyas which are authored in which form part of our uh, granthas or works are known as shri suktis and it is also very important that the the what are known as the pantis or the literature itself reading the literature itself is supposed to give us great sense of fulfillment so first i will read it for your kind information you can just listen to it this is how traditionally it is read and in the karakshepa method first the acharya reads out the text and then explains the text and afterwards the persons who are listening to the karakshepam are supposed to read out the text in same manner and verify whether they have absorbed all the meanings and explanations that were given by the acharya in those days of course i don't need myself to be an acharya so it's just a sharing of knowledge that is taking place as of today so i'll just read out and then i'll uh, explain the uh, exact words that have been authored by the great manavada mamuni and then directly go to the uh, text authored by pilloka acharya shri afpati i don't think uh, it is in telugu script but make out what it is all about but just you can have a look at it shri <clears throat> ai shri vaikuntha niketananai ityam mukta anubhavyanai niratishayana niratishayananda yuktanai irikkira sarveshwaran andalitya suri halo paadi tannai anubhavitte ityakaingari arasai aaluhaik praapti unda irikka cheideyum ara ilandu asanneva engira padiye asat kalparai kidakkira संसारि चेतननुडे इळवै अनुसंधित अत्यंत व्याकुल चित्तनाय इवरहल करणकळे परे इळंद इर होडिंद पक्षी पोले किडकिर दशेले करणादि हळै कोडतु अवत्रै कोंडु व्यभिचारियादे तन्ने आश्रयित उद्दीविक उद्दीविक कुडदाह अपौरुषेयमाय नित्य निर्दोषमाय सतः प्रमाणमान वेदत्तयुम अरीदाप्रियंग्रहमाहमी स्वरूपोपायुषाथयाथात्म्यप्रतिपारकमान 
ನರನ್ ವಿಷಯಮಾಹ ಪ್ರಕಾಶಿ ಪಿತ್ತಾನ್ ವೈಯತ್ತೈ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಲೋಕತ್ತಿರೆ ಸ್ವಮಹಿಷಿಯಾನ ವಿರಾಟಿ ವಿಷಯಮಾಹ ಪ್ರಕಾಶಿ ಪಿತ್ತಾನ್ ಧರ್ಮಶ್ಲೋಕತ್ತೈ ತಿರುತ್ತೆ ಸ್ವಾಶ್ರಿತನಾನ ಅರ್ಜುನನ್ ವಿಷಯಮಾಹ ಪ್ರಕಾಶಿ ಪಿತ್ತಾನ್ ಆಹಯಾದಿರೇ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಮಾರಂಭಾಂಬ್ಯಂದ್ರ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರಾದೀಲೇ ಈಶ್ವರನೈ ಅನುಸಂಧಿಕ್ಕಿರದೆ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಹೌ ದಿ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರಣಾಳ ಮಾಮಯ್ಯ ವೇರ್ ಹಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ಟು ಮುಮುಕ್ಷುಪಡಿ ಸೊ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ವೆರಿ ಕ್ವಿಕ್ಲಿ ಸಮರೈಸ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ ದಿ ಮೇಜರ್ ಪೋರ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ in the earlier class but there are a few issues that need to be highlighted in this class which i will do now so <clears throat> it is said that the supreme lord narayana is always interested and always he has in fact uh, he is so much worried and uh, i am not getting the exact word so he says what manwala mamni says here is what the lord thinks here as we all know ananta roda vishwaksena and innumerable beings in the shri vaikuntha or the eternal abode of the lord are enjoying unalloyed bliss forever and ever and ever then the supreme lord thinks in the bhuloka or in this material world is known as the leela vibhuti there are several millions of jiva and even these people are fully entitled to come here and enjoy that analog but why are they not doing this and then he quotes a very important sentence from the vedic from the taitri upanishad where it says asanneva sabhavati asad brahm he vedachet asti brahm ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೀಮ್ಲಿ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಸಮರೈಸಸ್ ದಿ ಎಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಅಸನ್ನೇವ ಸಭವತಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸದಿತಿ ಅವೇದ ಚೇತ್ ಎ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಹೂ ಡಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ರಿಯಲೈಸ್ ದಿ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ನಾನ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ and if a person realizes the existence of the supreme lord it is said realizes i am very important i have used the word realize <coughs> not know because as of now we all know that god exists and we understand so many of his leelas etc <coughs> but the word veda is used here which means vidya gnane which means we have to have the sakshatkara or the internal experience which is generally termed as realization in english language <coughs> so asti brahme ichate veda one who has <coughs> realized the existence of the supreme brahma is known as sat or he is addressed by the same name <coughs> which is used to denote the supreme brahman itself so what <coughs> so i manavala mamni says here is when they are entitled when all the jeevatmas that are there in the leela vibhuti are in the bhuloka they are also entitled like these people who are around, around me to come here and be in this divine uh, atmosphere and enjoy all the divine leelas and thereby get an alloyed bliss when they are doing so 
Why are they not using this opportunity? <clears throat> Why are they not establishing their right to do so? So then he found that they need some means to do so. <coughs> and therefore, if they are to do that, what should they do? They should engage in what is known as upasana or bhakti or whatever it is called. And to do that, <coughs> they need some means, which is actually the reason. So, which he says, he provided us or all the jivatmas with which I explained in the last class, so I am not going to that. But it is it was seen that after some time, the Lord actually reviewed how the Jivatmas or these individual souls are utilizing the means that I have provided for them to come here and attain me and enjoy this analyzed bliss. But it was seen, it was noticed. It was realized by the Supreme Lord that 99.9, I am just telling it in that manner, most of the Jeevatmas were not utilizing the means that were provided to them for this purpose. So later, Pillalokacharya very beautifully says, Devar Hadakshamana Puroda Shatai Nai Kiduma Pole Samsari Hadakche Ishwarashamana Atmavastuai Samsari Hadakshamai. So he says, he gives a very beautiful analogy once again from those days. So when the Yagnas are the ancient Vedic sacrifices were being conducted. A particular <coughs> um, dish made of rice flour, it is called as Purodasha in Sanskrit. <coughs> that was being prepared and there is a huge procedure behind it, how it has to be prepared, prepared in the proper sacred manner, etc. And then offered as offering or ahuti in the sacrificial fire. So it has been prepared and kept ready for offering after following all the elaborate procedures. Suppose that urodasha or that offering which is to be a prepare, which it is prepared due to the as per due procedures is actually offered to a dog instead of it being offered to the sacrificial fire, what will be the effect? How much of efforts have gone down the drain? And what are the atonements or prashtitas that need to be done? It's an unima unimaginable crime that it is if it happens. Similarly, Pralaloka Acharya says, this Atma Vastu or this Atman, the individual soul, belongs to the Supreme Lord only and it is he who has to, it is to him that this has to be offered. But what we do is, we actually offer this Atma Vastu to, to Amsaris. Suppose the husband is enamored of his wife, he offers it to his wife rather than the Supreme Lord. That doesn't mean that he should be affectionate or uh, love, love, he should love his but he should never forget the aim of his life, which is to offer, to make the Atma or the individual soul as an offering to the Supreme Lord only and to anybody else, not to anybody else. So that is what he says here. Even though have been given this Indriya, the sense organs and the body purely for the purpose of worshipping the Supreme Lord and nothing else. But that doesn't mean that a person should not have, because this is very important, that doesn't mean that a person should not aspire for enjoying things in life. But that should be incidental only, it is known as Anushangika in Sanskrit. 
it should be purely, purely, purely incidental. So it's like, suppose I travel from Bangalore to Mysore, three hours, or you travel from New York to San Diego or somewhere, let us say. I don't know how far it is. So on the way, what I do is, I stop for a few moments and have a cup of coffee or tea, and then proceed. But I have seen many people who actually undertake the travel purely for having various, uh, enjoying various types of dishes that are off course on the way, from Bangalore to Mysore. So it is not that they have some destination in mind. They enjoy the journey itself, where they actually consume various types of dishes, etc. And maybe some alcohol, etc. also. Some people may do. So then, they have forgotten the purpose of the journey. They enjoy the journey itself. Which we are all doing in a way. Where we have forgotten the purpose of life. And we are enjoying. <clears throat> we have forgotten our destination. We are enjoying the journey itself. Where we earn a living. And then enjoy the pleasures of life. Whether it is in the form of food or other sensual pleasures. So the Supreme Lord then realized, oh, all the means that I provided to them have not been used for the purpose for which they were provided at all. In fact, 99 point most of them have misused or abused the means. So then he said, I'll give you a code of conduct. I'll give you how you should, I'll give you rules and regulations. I'll lay down the rules and regulations. I'll also give you the codes of conduct <clears throat> with regard to how you have to use these means, that is the body and the sense organs. So for this purpose, he actually gave the Vedas to us. Then though he has given, he gave the Vedas, they were not easily understandable to all people. Then he gave the Dupabrahmana Maharaj Smriti Itiyadavananda. So Upabrahmana Nama Veda Artha Vishadi Karanam. That is what Ramanda Acharya says in his Sri Bhaj. So though the Vedas were bestowed upon us, which laid down the rules, the do's and don'ts, and also the means in which the main means, namely the individual, the body and the sense organs are to be used, most of the people could not understand this. Once again, by his divine grace, he actually gave the subsidiary texts, they are known as the Upabrahmanas, namely the Smriti works, the Itihasa works, and then the Purana works, which actually explain the meaning of the Vedas, Etc., in a very simple language that can be understood even by the layman. But once again, that also did not that, that also did not work. So Manavada Mamani says, Vedatayam Tadupa Brahmanangalam Smriti Itihasa Puranangalayam Pravarti Pitta Vedatilam Andashastra Bhyasatrika Aneka Yogyatai Vend Hayale so then once again, even those could not be understood, even the Smriti works, the Itihasa works, Purana works, <coughs> because they were in Sanskrit. And Sanskrit is not known by all the people in this world. And similarly, to know that certain other basic requirements were there which most of the people did not have. Therefore, what did he do? Purusharta 
സ്വപ്രതിപാദകം ഉപായ പ്രതിപാദകം ആൻഡ് പുരുഷാർത്ഥ പ്രതിപാദകം so three important aspects that we all have to know what is it that is swarupa yathatya pratipadaka first you have to know who you are or who i am <clears throat> what is the nature of this individual soul then secondly a person has to know <clears throat> what is the means for this individual soul to attain the supreme god and thirdly he also has to know who is that supreme lord and what is his nature what are his qualities <clears throat> what are his characteristics etc so actually in the indian in the context of indian philosophy indian uh, literature associated with spirituality it is very important to know what is known as the artha panchaka so once my i was very about nearly 25 years back i was working in a company and <clears throat> my boss was also a shri vishnu he was about 15 years elder to me we were just having a very casual discussion and <clears throat> he was telling me uh, since he was not familiar with the amount of literature that is there in the indian spirit in the context of the indian spiritual in the field of indian spirituality he asked me tell me how many books or how many pages of spiritual literature is there very casually he asked i told <clears throat> this is a very important story and very quickly i will narrate it it is mentioned in the vedas itself so the great bharadwaj maharshi or the sage bharadwaj he started of taking a challenge that he will study the entire text of the vedas then it is said that he In those days people used to live for 100 years so he continuously studied the vedas and learned the original text for about 100 years and if of 100 years was supposed to end he realized that it is not complete so he went to brahma and said oh lord you please give me 100 years more so that i can complete the study of the vedas then brahma said granted so he continued the study for 100 more years and 200 years completed and even as the 200 years were about to be completed he found out he realized that still he had not completed then once again he asked for 100 more years brahma said yes so he continued his study and even as the 300th year was about to be completed he was how much of the vedas had learned because he found that still art remained to be learned then he said oh lord you are the person who has actually given the vedas to the world through the rishis because it is mentioned specifically in the vedas yo brahmanam vidadhati ipuno veda vino and we all know the paraha avatara story because when brahma slept the vedas were taken away by the by an asura so it is brahma who is the person who holds the entire knowledge of the vedas the text of the vedas along with the meanings amaro bharadwaja see opposite you can see three mountains which are full of grass you bring three hand full grass so bharadwaja did so and he brought three handfuls of grass from the three mountains and then he showed it to brahma 
And Brahma said, what you have learned of the Vedas is this much. What you are holding in your hand. And the <coughs> text of the that has grown on all the three big mountains. And then he said, Ananta Vai Veda. The Vedas are, do not have an end. For example, Sama Veda has thousand shakhas, thousand branches, of which only about nine are in existence today. So like that, I will not go into that detail. So, 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 the Vedas, they are very difficult. They are in Sanskrit language and people don't know Sanskrit. So, there's only a few that's a language. They have to undergo certain austerities, etc. to that. So then, the Supreme Lord thought, I should do something wherein all people, irrespective of caste, creed, etc., have access to the divine knowledge, which actually <coughs> makes, which actually is accessible to all the That is the Tirumantram, Vayam and Tirumashtruka. So coming back to the story, where I left off, I was having a discussion with my boss. If you take the Ajurveda itself, you have seven khandas of Bra Samhita, then the Brahmana works, then the Aranika works, then the Upanishad works. And the Puranas, which run into about five lakh shlokas, 500,000 shlokas. Mahabharata, 125,000 shlokas. Ramayana, 24,000 shlokas. But how does one understand what is the purpose of this? Then I'm, and is it uh, physically, you can a person, even if he spends his entire time, lifetime, then how does one understand it? Can be summarized. Then I have greatness of Indians who follow the Vedic knowledge systems, especially the Sri Vaishnavas, who have beautifully summarized it. What can be mentioned in 100,000 shlokas can be summarized in one shloka also. And what can be mentioned in one shloka can be expanded to 100,000 shlokas also. The concept of the five artha panchaka, which is a very beautiful, by this name itself, Pillaloka Acharya has authored another work. Actually, is in a way, concise or expand, expanded uh, version of what we are going to study. Pandalo Rupam, Praptusha Pratyagatmanaha, Praptyupayam, Phalam Praptehe, Tatha Prapti Virohicha. Padanti Sakala Vedaha Setiha Sapuranakaha Unayascha Mahatma no Veda Vedanta Vedinaha. How beautifully he has summarized what is mentioned in probably or probably one million verses, let us say. Five most important things are mentioned in all, all these works put together. So many a times I say Tartha Panchaka is most important <clears throat> in the modern context. It applies, it's universally applicable to any project we undertake. And many a times I give the <laughs> example because Indians, most of the Indians, well, nearly 25 of my cousins are in the United States. So they think that United States that that is the aim of life, which is the aim of hundreds of people even today. So first you have to know Prapyasya Rupa, Prapyaswarupa. 
you know, if suppose you want to go and settle in America, you have to know first what America is, where where is it on the globe, what is its nature, what what type of a country it is, etc., etc. Then are you eligible to? You should have a passport, you should have a visa, you should have enough money to go there, etc., etc. So that is Prapteswarupa. Then third one is Prapteupayam. How do I go there? Should I take a ship or can I cycle my way all the way or can I walk also? So Prapteupa is the Upayaswarupa. Then Param Prapte. Then what is it that I get after I go to America? Well, I have seen about 10 to 20 people who had some imagination about America and they spent a fortune, spent much of their time going to America and then when they went there, they found that none of their dreams came true and they returned disappointed. So unless you know the Paraswarupa before itself, it is not worthwhile pursuing a particular endeavor. So, Phalam Prapte, Phalaswarupa is very important. And finally, the fifth one is Virodhiswarupa. It is knowledge of the impediments that could occur. Because even if you have a visa, even if you have a passport, if there is some criminal case pending against you, suppose they come to know that you are a communist or something like that, you may be immediately deported back from the airport itself. So, <clears throat> this Rupa is also very important that is to be known. So, similarly, Prabhupyasya Brahman. What are the five things you have to know? First, you have to know the nature of the Supreme Brahman that you have to attain. That is Lord Narayana. What are his qualities? What are his characteristics? Where he is? How he is? Etc. Etc. How many forms he has? And Prabhtuscha Pratyagatmana. The nature of the individual soul who has to attain that Supreme Lord. Then Prabhtyupayam, the means by which the individual soul appears. And fourthly, Prabhalam Prabhtehe. What are the fruits that are attained when he attains the Supreme Lord? And finally, Pratha, what are the impediments? What are the obstacles that are person might in this spiritual soldier? So, all the Vedic and allied literature which runs into Indian slokas can be summarized in these five. Padanti Sakala Veda. So <clears throat> they can be the entire gamut of Indian spiritual literature can be summarized and put into these five compartments. Padanti Sakala Veda Sa Itihasa Puranaka Munayascha Mahatmana, not only the Vedas, the Itihasas, Puranas, etc. All the literature of the ancient sages and other saints who succeeded them can be summarized in this. That's what I told him. He felt very happy. Then I said, it is not my greatness, it is the greatness of our predecessors. <clears throat> so that is what Manavala Mamani also says here. He says, of course, he doesn't mention specifically about these two. He says, Swarupa Upaya Purusha Artha Yatapya Pratipadakam. So Swarupa so Swarupa Jnana, Upaya Jnana and Purusha Artha Jnana. We have to add the other two also, which will actually be, which are also actually mentioned, because Virodhi Swarupa also is mentioned very specifically by Pradhoka Acharya. He says, Samsari Halak Virodhi Swarupa Apekshitam Manapana Dihil. 
ಪೂಕ್ಷುಕ್ಕಳಕ್ಕೆ ವಿರೋಧಿ ಸಂಸಾರ ಸಂಬಂಧ ಅಪೇಕ್ಷಿತ ಪರಮ ಪದ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತಿ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ವೆರಿ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಐ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ದಿ ಫೈವ್ ಆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕಾಂಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ರಹಸ್ಯ ಪ್ರಯತ್ನ ಸ್ವಯಮೇವಾಚಾರ್ಯನ ಪ್ರಕಾಶಿ ಪಿತ್ತರುಣಿನ ಒನ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ನೋಟೆಡ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಈಸ್ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಟಾಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ವೇದಾಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ದಿ ವೇದಾಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬೀನ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಬೈ ದಿ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಥ್ರೂ ಮಹರ್ಷಿಸ್ ಸೊ ದಿ ಸ್ಟೇಟಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಈಸ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಟು ದಿ ಮಹರ್ಷೀಸ್ ವಿ ಸೇ whenever we come across a mantra we say this is the person to whom it was revealed so is a pranavasya rishi brahma savitriya harshi vishwamitra etc so they are supposed to be in the place of the acharya but in this context who is the acharya who actually gave the three mantras first firstly to the varna so it is the supreme lord himself who did it therefore it is the lord took it upon himself he took the responsibility unto himself to give all the three mantras to the people so that they can be universally used irrespective of caste creed sex age nationality etc because nationality is one aspect because now in this class there are many people from different countries therefore irrespective of all these so called uh, limitations he has given it to all the people he gave it to all the people and there this point i have already explained i'll not go into the detail so the tirumantram or the mantra raja or the ashtakshara mahamantra was explained or what was revealed rather to his own amsha called the naramsha or naravatara in the badri kashtam so that is why while we actually chant the ashtakshara mahamantra as per procedure this is very important along with the anganyasa and karanyasas is ashtakshara mahamantrasya badri kashtam vasi narayana harishi just as we let us say gayatriya savitriya harishi vishwamitra similarly we say ashtakshara mahamantrasya badarika ashrama vasi narayana harishi so it was revealed by the lord narayana who is in the stage who resides in badarika ashrama or the famous badarika ashram of the north and we are now i am sitting in the badri ghat of the south which is also having badri narayana as the kshetra devata so in a way it is very meaningful that this class is being conducted in the uh, precincts of the divine abode of lord narayana the, the holy badri kashtam of the south then secondly dwaya mantra was explained by the supreme lord in shri vaikuntha to his consort goddess mahalakshmi and the third charma shloka was explained by <coughs> lord krishna the most inca- important incarnation of lord narayana or vishnu in the battlefield to arjuna so this is mentioned in very clear terms by manohar mahapu and then he goes on to explain ini in the rahasya trayandan <coughs> ಶಬ್ದಂ ಸುಗ್ರಹಮಾಯಿರಂದೇಯಾಹಿಲಂ ಅರ್ಥಂ ಉಪದೇಶಗಮ್ಯಮಾಹೆಯಾಲು ಅದರಿಂದೇ ಎಲ್ಲ ಅರಕ್ಕ ಮುಜ್ಜೀವಿಕೆ ಉಂಡಾಹೆಯಾಲು ಅಂದ ರಹಸ್ಯ ತ್ರೇತ್ತಿಲು ಪೂರ್ವಾಚಾರ್ಯರ್ ಹೇಳುಡೆಯ ಉಪದೇಶ ಪರಂಪರಾ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತಮಾನ ಅರ್ಥ ವಿಶೇಷಂಗಳೈ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ನೀಡ್ ಫಾರ್ in acharya to write about this work that question arises and that question is answered by madhavana mahamuni he says though the readings of the mantras can easily be understood 
For example, Om Namo Narayanaya Shriman Narayana Charano Sharanam Prapadye Shrimati Narayanaya Namaham Sarva Dharman Prapadye Sharanam Raja Nanta Sarva Pape Bhyo Mokshishyami Mashuchaha Books can actually be easily chanted by most of the people. But it is not enough. It is not sufficient. Just chants these mantras. The first level it is acceptable because, for example, it is said that when a person chants the Narayana Nama, even without knowing its meaning, it will have the desired effect. But from the point of view of a world persons, that will actually it will, of course, that itself is a great thing from an ordinary point of view, but for it to have a completeness, I understand the inner meanings of these. He says, <clears throat> though the Shabdaswarupa or the word forms, the sound form of the we get the meaning has to be only proper instruction known as Upadesha. So he's Tham Upadesha Gamyamahe Adam and other in the La Rukum Uji Vikavendu He Adam. So if Ujivana or fulfillment has to occur. It will occur only when the person chants the mantras in the proper methodology, in the proper diction, etc., along with the complete meaning of the mantras. And how does one get the meaning? How does one get to understand the meanings of the mantras? It is very important. He says, Andarahasya Trayatilum Purvachar so that has to be understood and realized for the only means of the instructions given to us by our Purvacharyas who are realized souls. So that is very important. Therefore, other kum sugraha. So he says that instruction has to come to us only in the proper parampara. And in that parampara also, it has to come the proper instruction. And as I mentioned earlier, these are known as Rahasya Granthas. There is a secretive instructions. Once a person asks, when you have given it in the print it was when actually Pilladoka Acharya documented the entire <clears throat> Mamukshupadi and other works, a person asked him, it seems that you have documented all the secrets. How does it then Pridhaloka Acharya said there is a very chance that these concepts which were given to us by our Purva Acharyas as will get lost due to the effect of of so the further generations have fulfilled then definitely these have to be documented. And therefore it was documented in what is known as the Manipravada style because <clears throat> it is only certain persons who can actually understand it. Though it is universally applicable, it was written in a particular style so that only those who had, <clears throat> who understood the responsibilities associated with this could understand. That is why they continue to be called as the Rahasya Grutas. 
So, Bhilaloka Acharya authored this work, which explains all the nuances of these three rahasyas, that is the <coughs> Ashtakshara Mahamantra, Dvai Mantra, and also Karnashara. Then Manavala Mamani goes on to explain. He has authored 18 rahasyas. And specialities were called the Mukshupadi. Then he says, for that he says, Munde Rahasya Trayavishamana Moon Rupabandham Itarudi Chikapayadam Paranda Padi Ati Vistratamaya Padi. ஒரு <laughs> Namum Purva Prabandangalilla Nuttamana at the Visheshangalum, I Prabandatile Unda Hayadum, the way a lar to mother in Yamaha Kadavadi. During the time of Pilaloka Acharya and the subsequent period by which Manavala Mamani appeared on the scene, all the people were mostly studying the Mumukshupadi. So Manala Mamaniya says, why it is so popular? So earlier itself, before the Mumukshupadi was authored by Pridhidoka Acharya, <coughs> three important treatises on the same topic were authored by him. The first work was known as Praban Yuchikapri, which is very, very concise, so we cannot understand fully. Then he authored the Parandapati, which is extremely elaborate. But he then authored one more work, which is neither too elaborate nor too concise, but it is filled with Sanskrit sentences. So women generally would not know Sanskrit language in those days. And other sections of society who did not have access to they also understand the Shiyaf Kapitali because it contained extensively Sanskrit, Sanskritized words and Sanskrit sentences. So then I should author a work which does not have all the three disadvantages, not fallacies, but disadvantages. That is neither too short nor, that, uh, nor too long. And also at the same time, in a very simpler language that is versatile and easy for everybody to understand. So Manavala Mamani says, this Mumukshupadi is <clears throat> the most popular one. And one more, Several nuances of the Rahasya Priyas that were not exposed to works have been included in this work. Therefore, this work is universally accepted. Therefore, it may be mentioned that this Mokshupadi <coughs> can be called as the Though we have Sri Yutana Bhushnam, which is another huge monumental magnum opus, this Omukshupadi can be treated as a mini magnum opus of Pridhidoka Yeah, And then he directly, with this introduction, he directly starts the commentary on the Omukshupadi, where the first sutra or churnika is as follows. Omukshut ariyavendum rahasyam mundru. Which literally means it is a very simple and straightforward statement. 
where it says <coughs> a mumukshu or a person desirous of attaining moksha or liberation has to know the three rahasyas. So this <coughs> Tirumantra, Dvaya, Dvaya Mantra and Charmashtra. And we will go into the details of the these two Nikas in the next class. So I hope I have been able to give you a comprehensive introduction to the Mokshupadi. Of course, much more needs to be said, which we actually will go on learning as we progress. So today, earlier to the class, I had a discussion with the <coughs> Keshava Das, who is actually conducting this class. We have a target class to complete the <coughs> explanation of the Mokshupadi. It should not be more than that because it may become unwieldy. And less than that may not be able we may not be able to cover all the aspects. And he has agreed. So on an average, on an average three churnikas or sutras as they are called, because roughly about uh, approximately there are around, around three hundred sutras in all the three together. So three to four sutras will be covering in each class. I hope this is acceptable to you. So with these words, I conclude today's introductory class or other introductory classes. And from here onwards, we'll directly go to the <coughs> text. Uh, of course, today also I have covered the entire portion of the introduction given by Swami Manavala Mahami. And it is imperative as per our Sampradaya and as per common sense also that we study the Umukshupadi along with the commentary of only without which we will not get the proper perspective about Mokshupati. So with these words, I can I mentioned sir most welcome. Thank thank you very much, Swami. Um I just wanted to show everyone that uh, and you also that it's there is uh, online. We can see the Trunikas, different Trunikas online. Uh this is the one that was covered today. Oh, yes. So what I will what I will do is this is a very short uh, explanation. The translation is given, and uh, I will share this link with everyone. So uh, those persons who do not know Tamil, they can they can uh, or Mani Pravala, let's say they can um, they can see this. Also, um, another thing that I uh, <coughs> I believe might be useful. Is that uh, is that I can share a file with you with them? Uh, Alkon Davili Govindacharya has done an English translation of Artha Panchika, which was part of the subject today, and uh, I can I can just show that uh, if everyone sees this uh, this screen, there the eighteen rahasyas or books or a secret uh, on the secret mantras is were written by Pillai Lokacharya and Swami has mentioned in his class today, number 12, number 13 and number 14. Uh, he's given some details about them. We are studying number one, Mumukshapadi, and he also mentioned about Sri Vachana This, this, uh, this, this English summary of Artha Panchika, I'll also, distribute to everyone of the of the attendants and if they want to read it it'll give them a lot of understanding about Arta Panchiga. Today also you mentioned these uh, these aspects of Arta Panchiga. Uh, Swarupa, Paraswarupa, Purushata Swarupa, Upaya Swarupa and Virodi Swarupa. These are all broken down on the side here. So this is a very useful chart for people to understand what you were speaking about. So I will I will give everyone that uh, that PDF with your permission. Uh, as for my oh, question, my permission is not required. You may <laughs> share it with me also. Oh, okay, fine. Uh, as for <clears throat> as for my questions, I have some. Uh, I have a request that uh, if you can please forward me the Tanians in whichever script you like, and also if we can know the meanings of the Tanians which are being which are being recited at the beginning of the class. My suggestion is I can provide that in Roman script for others, 
And in order not to take time from the class, I will request people who are coming to the class to chant the Tanians before logging on. To yes. the class. Um, <clears throat> secondly, uh, my question was, <clears throat> you explained about who is a Mamukshu. And, uh, and I am, uh, my question is, uh, of course, it, because these are considered secret teachings, is Mumukshapati, the study of Mumukshapati, only for persons after they have taken Samashrainam? Or is it for before they have taken Samashrainam? Because... No, the... it is actually after Samashrainam only. Yes. Okay. Because once they, once they have the uh, authentic Upadesha of the mantras, then only they are supposed to learn the meanings. So as per uh, tradition, it is strictly for those who have had Samashrainam. <clears throat> okay, as so... So my question would be, is, is not the first, this is a question on the first Trunika, that, that he says that the, these three mantras should be known by those persons who want liberation, who want moksha. <clears throat> is this not redundant? Because already the, everyone who is studying this has taken Samashrainam. So don't they already know these things? Don't they know that they should have these three months? It's a very, 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 very important question, and it has to be explained in a little bit detail. But uh, what I, I'll, uh, I'll, I request you to excuse me because uh, even your sound is a little bit feeble. So I suggest we have this question in the beginning of the next class, uh, where the internet connection is more more stable and things like that. Okay. So please, so please, uh, please note down the question. I, I will send important I, question, and I would be very happy to answer it. So I, I, I will send you. Yeah, I'll send. I will send you by text all of my questions that I have from today. Yes, yes. The uh, the the uh, the other questions I'll just mention now, uh, so that they're there. Um, I also want to know whether propanas, those persons who have, uh, who are desirous of the mamukshus, desirous of liberation. Uh, whether they, after taking these mantras at Samashrayana, whether they are supposed to do Purascharya or Purascharana of these mantras, try to get the city of these mantras by the normal methods of mantra shastra by yes, chanting. Yes, uh, Purascharana Purascharana, Purascharana is very important. That also I'll mention in the next thing because in the uh, Sri Vaishnava Anushtana Krama, that is the Anika, they have been specifically mentioned. And even in the Gadhyatraya, the Lord Supreme Lord Himself tells Ramanja Acharya, Dvayam Arthanundanena sa sada evam vakta. He, he tells Ramanja Acharya, he instructs Ramanja Acharya that he should always keep chanting the Dvaya Mantra continuously along with the, <coughs> um, along with the SP also thinking about its meaning. So definitely Purasharana has to be done. There is no doubt about it. So I and think... As I mentioned, it is inter integrated in the Trivaradhana Krama, which is very important. That also I'll mention. Yes, I'll okay. mention this uh, about this in detail. Yes. Sorry for interrupting. No, no, no problem. Okay, so then uh, also you had mentioned in a previous class that uh, Manavala Mahamuni Gal had, uh, had a daily routine. And uh, I... I, I was interested, some other persons are interested to go through that, perhaps in a three-day seminar, in a special seminar, that would be Purva Dinacharya, uh, Purva, Purva Dinacharya, Uttara Dinacharya, and the uh, Yatiraj Vimsati, I believe. Uh, and, and, yes, just, yes. and this would also probably include some aspects of this uh, Purusharana. Yes, yes, surely, surely. We'll definitely have a session. Three days, unfortunately, I'm most, uh, most uh, acceptable to me. Yes. Then my, my, other, my next question would be whether a prapana uh, has to do prayas chitta for, in, for sins, for, for papam that which, which he has committed, or uh, either before or even after Samashrayana. Yes, yes. That also I'll answer separately. Yes, yes. and I, I would like also, uh, if, you, if you know, I would like you also to give your, your understanding of the system in Deshika Sampradaya of Bharanyasa in relationship to this uh, Prize Chitta, uh, uh, Chitta property. We've heard about Prize Chitta property, which I believe is not acceptable for Tenacharya Sampradaya, but for 
by Deshika Sampradaya, they have this idea. So some explanation of yes, the, di yes. the differences. Then, definitely, uh, definitely. then you, you were mentioning about the, that uh, Mamukshu has to know the meaning of these mantras. He should not, the first level is that he chants the mantras, but he has to know the meaning of the mantras or the mantrakta. So uh, I believe the, uh, the Samashrayanam of Sri Padramanujacharya was from Periyanambi, also known as Mahapurna. Uh, did, 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 he get, uh, did he get mantrakta only from Tirukostiyanambi or Gostipurna? Or did he also get man any mantrakta from Periyanambi, Mahapurna? Yeah, that also, that also I'll clarify. Uh, thank you very much, Swami. Patram Bhivatya Dikunar Naam Nitin Rapranam Nidamataram Munim